Hello and welcome. So in this video, we're going to do an application of the solo model, uh, and it's going to be kind of the full solo model with uh, population growth, technology growth, uh, and the rest. And we're going to see the effect of a destruction of capital. Um, so this is actually just kind of like an example where we're looking at convergence dynamics. So in this problem, uh, the outline, if you want to skip ahead, uh, I'm going to go through the effect. Sorry, no man just dropped something off. Okay, um, so we'll start off with uh, analysis using the solo diagram. We'll also look at some of the equations, and then um, we'll go through time series of each of these variables. You know, all the aggregate levels of outputs and capital, the per capita levels of capital uh, outputs, investment and consumption, and then uh, per effective worker levels, uh, which we don't really need to for this question, but we will for um, per effective worker level of capital and per effective worker level of output. Uh, also, before I begin, I should note that this video is one of many covering the solo model, so have a look at the video description if you want to see a link for other things related. Okay, so let's get started. So what do we mean by a destruction of capital? So let's look at the solo diagram. Uh, this is the solo diagram. So imagine we are at the steady state level of um, capital per, work, per effective worker capital, right? So imagine we start off at the steady state. Um, we're exactly right here where our um, capital per effective worker is right at this K-star level. So that's is exactly where investment equals that break-even investment line. Um, so one period to the next period, this level of capital per effective worker is constant, right? So you're in the steady states. Um, you know, aggregate output is growing at the rate of population growth plus technology growth. Um, output per worker is growing at the growth rate of technology. You know, everything's in equilibrium. Um, you know, so it can, per effective worker levels are all in the steady state of rate zero. All of our um, per worker levels are growing at rate G, right? And then that all the aggregate levels are growing, um, well, population grows at its population growth rate N, but all the rest are growing at um, population growth plus technology growth. So good, happy world. Then, then some destruction, some capital is destroyed. So the effect of that is basically to take us from if we were at this level of capital per effective worker, we are, we'd be then pushed down to some somewhere down over here. Um, and at any level, if you remember from like uh, um, you know, transition dynamics or convergence discussion, um, at any level of capital per effective worker down here. Um, which occurs with the destruction of capital, uh, then notice that this line, the investment line, is greater than the break-even investment line. So if for some reason you get to a point where your capital per effective worker is down here, um, you're going to see that investment's greater than break-even investment, which means our capital per effective worker is accumulating. So if we were to look at that in a time series, so in a time series, what I did here is, you know, I just used an Excel spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, and for each of these little interesting variables that we had, uh, I started off at some level, randomly chosen, um, and then all the rest, we have equations that kind of define what they are, uh, and then the capital accumulation equation, you know, uh, defines what capital is going to be the next period. So I just plugged all that in and let the system run, right? And what do we get? Well, um, up to this dotted line, uh, the things are just in equilibrium, right? So this is the log of capital. This is the log of output. Um, why did I do log output and log capital? Well, if you just do the capital and the log levels with the growth rate, you'll see this exponential growth. Um, so by taking the log, you get this nice, you convert that growth rate into it, like a nice you know, linear straight line. So you see before the destruction of capital, which occurs at this dotted line, uh, everything's growing at that growth rate. So the, the slope of this is equal to population growth plus um, uh, technology growth. And then looking at the per capita levels, so this is capital per worker, this is output per worker, and then I did over here the logs of it, right? So it converts that growth rate into a nice straight line. Before the dotted line, you have the, this is just growing at the growth rate of technology. This is the log output per worker growing at the, out, at the uh, growth rate of technology. Uh, similarly with um, investment and consumption, going down a little bit, uh, you can see that the slope right here, this is just the slope of um, the growth rate of technology. Uh, and then for investment, same thing. And then per effective worker levels are down here. So um, per effective workers, worker levels, right? Uh, I said by assumption before that destruction of, of capital, 
we were in the steady state. So you can see capital per effective worker, you know, k-hat, was exactly what we saw in the diagram. So up to some point, we were at this steady state level k star. So you can see f f going through time, uh, we were at the steady state level of capital per effective worker. Similarly, we were at that steady state level, um, so our output per effective worker was also constant. Okay, so then comes along, we get a destruction of capital. So what I, what I did is um, starting at this point, at this dotted line point, I just destroyed a bunch of capital. Um, so we could see what happens, what happened um, to log capital here. We just get, see a huge dip, a huge drop, um, which is pretty, you know, exactly what you expect. This is exactly what we did. We see an instantaneous drop. Um, output, right, uh, is in part a function of capital. Remember, output is right here. So if some of this capital is destroyed in this Cobb Douglas, this modified Cobb Douglas production function, then output is going to instantaneously drop, which we see right here. Um, and then switching over to the solo diagram and capital per effective worker, what happens through time? So you see the instantaneous drop when capital is destroyed, right? Um, but after that point, after that time, um, the that convergence dynamics start to occur. At any level of capital per effective worker in this area down here, investment is going to be greater than the break-even investment line, where investment is defined as uh, the amount of one's income that's being converted into capital, and so it's adding to the capital stock. And this break-even investment line is defined as the amount of capital that needs to be produced each period just to keep capital constant. So since the amount added to capital is greater than the amount needed to keep things constant, then this implies anywhere capital per effective worker down this area implies that the capital per effective worker will increase. And we see exactly that happening. So we have that initial jump, and then after that, capital per effective worker is increasing. Uh, and it's going to increase so that it converges towards that steady state level of capital per effective worker. Uh, and so over time, over many periods, it will converge back up. Uh, initially, the growth rate in capital perfective worker is very fast. So you can see the slope's very steep there. So that means the growth in capital perfective worker is very fast. But over time, as it approaches that steady state level, that convergence is, is less and less, or that uh, growth in capital perfective worker is less and less. Uh, the reason why, you know, imagine um, a capital perfective worker down at this area. Investment is only just above the break-even investment line. And so um, the addition to capital perfect worker is only very, very small when capital is very, very close to that steady state level. And so we see that the growth rate of capital perfect worker in this area, even though it's not quite at the steady state level, um, the growth rate's you know very, very small. Uh, and then output perfect worker, you know that's just a function of capital perfect worker. So it follows a very similar, I think, identical convergence path. Uh, it's just the values are going to be slightly different. Okay. So now let's look um, to the per capital levels. So this is capital per worker. It's no longer capital per effective worker. You get the initial drop in capital, uh, and then you get this convergence up towards the um, steady state growth path, like this growth path right here. Uh, and then since output per effective worker is just a function of capital per effective worker, you have a growth path that's very, very similar. Um, and once again, you get you see the transition dynamics of uh, initially the growth rate is very, very quick, but then it converges up to that steady state growth level, like the, the balanced growth path level of capital per effective worker. The slope of this uh, capital per effective worker and output per effective worker is defined by the growth rate of technology. Uh, if you remember all of these per worker levels, the growth rate is defined by this. Uh, the growth rate of technology is G. And so you see the slope here that's just defined by the growth rate of technology. And then these last two areas down here, this is just happens to be log consumption and, and investment per worker. Uh, if you remember, investment and consumption are just defined by the savings rate. So investment per worker just takes what is output per worker and then it times it by the savings rate. So if the savings rate is 20%, it takes output per worker, times that by 20%, and that's investment. And then consumption is what's left over, so it's just 1 minus the savings rate. So if the savings rate is 20%, then consumption is just the output level times uh, 0.8, and that's consumption. 
And so you'll see uh, what appears to be an identical path for investment and consumption to output. So basically the story with the destruction of capital is um, you get this initial drop in these levels. Um, and then initially at, uh, at the start of it, you're gonna have a very fast growth rate in output uh, per worker, um, aggregate output, and output per effective worker. So intuitively, you know, why might that be the case? Why do you start off, you know, after the destruction, why do you start off with this really, really fast growth rate? Well, if you destroy quite a bit of capital, um, you know, off, and we started off the steady state, and then all you do is destroy capital, you don't change anything else. Well, then the marginal product of capital in that situation is going to be relatively high in comparison to um, the, uh, uh, you know, marginal product of, of labor or anything else. So, um, you know, firms in this situation are going to see that the marginal product of capital, like the value of adding an additional bit of capital, is, is so high. So they're going to try to convert as much as they possibly can into, um, into that extra bit of capital uh, early on. Um, so leading to this fast initial growth rate. But over time, as the uh, level of the capital per effective worker down here, um, over time, as the cap level of capital for vector worker approaches the initial steady state, the value of adding a little bit of capital is not quite as much as it was at that initial point down there. And since the, margin the marginal product of capital when current level of, ca of capital per effective worker is very close to the steady state, uh, since the, the value of adding a little bit extra is so small, they're only going to add a little bit of extra. And so at this level down here, you'll have the growth rate of capital per factor worker to be relatively small. Um, so that's that. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. <laughs> uh, if it wasn't, let me know. Uh, and if you found it helpful, be sure to click like and you know, thanks and have a good day.